channel hope you've all had a wonderful day today's video is another book date and it's not a positive one um, so basically I finished uh, Frost at Christmas and moved on to Simon Pegg's Nerd Do Well um, I got about where are we I got about 135 pages in ish so it's sort of here um, and I was talking to some of the other ladies that are involved in the challenge and I just decided I really didn't want to continue with it. Um, it's just, I mean, the, the pictures in it are really lovely. It's nice to see sort of him growing up and things. So you've got this big one here. And some of the captions for the photos are actually really funny. So it's me at my 18th birthday in 1988. Notice the ripped black jeans, the red and white stripy top and heavily crimped hair. Also the birthday cape birthday cake in the shape of the Aristotelian faces of dramatic art. I was still a bit of a dick at this point, which I thought was quite funny. Um, there's sort of some bits about um, Shaun of the Dead, which is one of my favourite films. Uh, where are we? And basically, there's just sort of pictures throughout his life of things he's done. Um, there's some further at the back, uh, which I, I did actually take the time to look at. Um, so of his sort of his wife and his little girl, and um, his dog as well, and obviously different things he's been in. He was in um, Burke and Hare. So in terms of the pictures, I felt I learned more about Simon Pegg through the pictured pictures he'd put in his book than the writing itself. Um, I actually really, really struggled to get as far as I did and when I was talking to some of these other ladies I just thought, you know what, life's too short to be reading something that I really don't want to be reading and I thought if I continue with this book it's going to take me forever to reach the others because I just don't want to pick it up. Um, and the reason for that is basically there's like small facts chucked in in the middle of him talking about like films and things that sort of um influenced his life and his choices and his sort of career moves later on so like star wars star trek things like that and while that is really interesting i couldn't really make an awful lot of sense of it it was kind of like he'd be going off on a tangent about um like star wars and then in it he'd speak about like um like uh his mum and dad splitting up or and how he turned to star wars and things like that i just oh i just really didn't find it that interesting i really really struggled and i love simon Pegg. i think he's hilarious i love a lot of his films and i just think he's really great and him and nick frost i find a fantastic pair to watch but i just couldn't get into the book and i have i have read quite a few reviews on Goodreads about what other people thought. Um, some people thought it was really great and other people had the same sort of view as me that it was a lot of sort of information about films and things with sort of random facts about him chucked in. Um, not at the beginning of every chapter but, but at the beginning of most because uh, he originally wanted to write like a sci-fi um, story about him and like a talking robot. Uh, called Canterbury so there's a there's like chapters like or a few pages of that with an ongoing story that you sort of discover throughout and I didn't really get that either um I don't know it just wasn't really a book for me so I am not continuing and that is the reason for this book date I really didn't want to have to get rid of a book because I created the challenge to read 19 books but this is one of the 19 that I will not be continuing with. Um, so I have other books that I have in mind to read this year. Uh, one in collaboration with the lovely Nikki Pearson. We're going to do a shared book read. Um, and I will either count that in my 19 books if we get to the end and I couldn't fit in another like autobiography. Or I have the Alan Partridge Nomad one 
in this um, in this series, which um, my dad gave me, and I think that will sort of count as two categories. I'm not sure how you guys will feel about it. So if you think I should read a completely separate book, then I will do that. Um, or if you are happy for me to combine Nomad and um, like my autobiography one as one book, then I will do that. Um, but I, I am hoping to read 19 books anyway, but this one I just cannot continue with. And it makes me really, really sad because I searched for this one. I had it on my list for ages on my phone. Um, and we went into a charity shop and I found it and this guy was holding it and it was kind of like, oh, is he going to put it down so I can have it? And he put it down and walked off and then uh, he got to like the door and I could see him coming back so I kind of picked it up and ran off <laughs> because it was one I'd been looking out for for absolutely ages and I mean if that guy watches my channel in the unlikely event then let me know and I will pass it on to you um, but yeah I just couldn't continue with it I loved the pictures and I, I read specifically the small chapter about how he met Nick Frost um, let me just see if I can find a picture of him and Nick Frost. Where are we? Um, because I was really sort of intrigued to see how they met. Um, so Nick Frost is this one here, and then you got Bill Nye and um, Sam Pegg on the set of Shaun of the Dead, which is one of my favourite films. I'm pretty sure I could quote most of it. Um, but yeah, they've been friends for a long time. They've starred in a lot of films together. So I did skip to the chapter specifically about how they met. If any of you are interested in that, then um, basically uh, they were introduced by Simon's girlfriend at the time. Um, Nick wanted to be, um, or wanted to get into sort of stand-up comedy and things. And um, he was a waiter in a restaurant. And Simon said, you know, he was like the funniest guy and how could the funniest guy he'd met work in a restaurant um so it was really nice i enjoyed that chapter but yeah i'm sorry i didn't give like a spoiler break um i hope i didn't give too much away um but honestly i i don't i don't recommend it for anyone that likes books that i like like so far if you've sort of followed me along with this challenge and um you've sort of been interested in all the books i've read I don't recommend this one if you're along the same lines. I, I know autobiographies are quite difficult to get into as well. Um, but I read um, Miranda Hart's autobiography. Um, who else have I got? I have read another one, but I don't know where it is. I don't know if I gave that one away after reading it. I kept Miranda's because I thought it was hilarious. But yeah, I mean, I, I read Miranda Hart's and I thought it was amazing. Really got into it. Found it a really quick and easy read. This one... I just struggled with. Uh, I mean, I'd read you an extract, but... <sighs> okay, I'll read you just a quick extract. It says, When I wasn't adhering to a ludicrously heavy acting schedule as a nipper, I was often splashing around in the local municipal. However, I wasn't a great swimmer when I was young. Nowadays, I can cut through the water like a buttered dolphin, but for a time, I dreaded the weekly school swimming lessons. It was a confidence issue more than a skill in the water thing. You couldn't keep me out of the sea on family holidays, particularly after I discovered the many varied joys of snorkeling. Okay, so that one I can get on with. That one I can deal with quite happily. And then... Because um, there are some like interesting sections... And then, where's the chapter that I was recently reading? Uh, so here he's speaking about um, Star Wars, and he says, The film represented many of Lucas's preoccupations, combining sophisticated visuals, use of music and sound design, as well as objects travelling at great speed, robots and midgets. It was everything America was crying out for, and on its release could have could not have been more warmly welcomed by the cinema-going public. Star Wars was and is a simple tale of good versus evil, which shamelessly celebrates the thrusting positivity and optimism of young white America, clearly defining the boundaries between good and evil so there can be no mistake who are the good guys and who are the bad. And it's just kind of stuff like that the whole way through. Um, so it'll have a chapter where it's a little bit about him and a lot about films he's watched. And to be honest, it's... A struggle for me to talk about because I just don't get it. 
Um, but yeah, so I am DNFing this, I did not finish. And I am moving on to this one. Um, the Beast Within, it is a Disney, uh, a, oh, what are we? It's a Twisted Tale, I believe. Is this a Twisted Tale? Or are my other ones Twisted Tales? Um, yeah, so it's this one. It's written by Serena Valentino, uh, A Tale of Beauty's Prince. Uh, the tale is as old as time, but what transformed the prince into the beast? The story of the beast, uh, the story of Beauty and the Beast has been told many different times in many different ways. This one version pulled from many past down through the ages. It's a story of vanity and arrogance, of love and hatred, and of course, beastliness and beauty. Um, it's not a particularly like hefty book. It's only 200 pages. Um, but I am doing a book collaboration very soon, as I said, with the lovely Nikki Pearson. So I needed a short one um, and an interesting one to get me th past this one. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you guys think about me DNFing this book um, and how you think I should um, go forward with my challenge in terms of obviously getting rid of my autobiography one. Um, but that is everything from me on this topic. I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Take care. Bye.